Hello, hello, hello. I thought I would make a short little video just to follow up yesterday's announcements around Azure Purview in that it is now generally available, which is awesome, awesome news. So apologies, I've not made a video for a couple of weeks. I've been on holiday and then at conferences, real conferences with actual people in person. And obviously I then get a cold, so I sound like I've been smoking, which is not something I do, but ugh. anyway, you know, what better remedy than the data governance tool lots of people have been looking at and excitedly waiting to go GA is now actually generally available. So I'm not going to spend long, just going to take a quick step at one or two of the, uh, the key points that you should know if you're thinking about now rolling uh, Purview out into a production environment, basically, uh, and then a little note about pricing and things to be aware of. So we'll take a look at that. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any particular challenges and questions and things you want to know about Purview, let me know down in the comments because we've done some interesting things. I'm obviously going down the engineering path. I want to automate it and plug more stuff into it and push stuff over to it. If there's other parts of Purview you want to look at, give me a shout. Let me know what you're thinking about and we can do some more videos and demos as we go. So let's have a quick look. So this is the uh, event that was yesterday, the Maximize the Value of Your Data in the Cloud event. I'll pop a link down in the description, and that's the, essentially it's the launch event. We're all told there's going to be a big announcement. You'll never guess what it's going to be. And uh, it was, it was GA. That's, that's the story. Um, and there's a lot of it, which is kind of the, the same kind of uh, making the argument for Purview. This is why Purview is such a good thing. If you've been following the videos, if you've been looking at us, trying out different things, you already know about Purview and what it can do and the cool bits. But at least it's good to get the idea and where they're pitching it and the messaging and kind of uh, who Purview is for. And keep mentioning things like this chief data officer, chief security officer, people who are responsible for the data in their org. Just be very, very keen on this as a piece of software. So go to that, watch it. It's only a short video. I think it's only about half an hour. Um, and then you can like, get an idea of what is going on. Two key frames. Obviously, the one key frame is it is now generally available. So that just means you can use it in production. That just means it's backed by Microsoft SLAs. So when something's in preview, it might go down. They might suddenly tell you, oh, by the way, your account's going to disappear because there's a new version coming out. They might say, ah, the thing that we call that, we've now changed it. And they can because it's all in preview. Uh, GA, it's now governed by your service level agreements. There is an uptime agreement. There is an availability of agreement. There's basically an agreement that they're not going to just randomly turn it off while you're in the middle of using it, at least not without some notice. Um, so yeah, if you're thinking about adopting Purview, but you haven't because it was still in preview, you can now feel a lot better about just clicking that button uh, and giving it a go. I mean, it's quite a good story. You know, in that preview time, they've discovered 57 billion assets. Although, to be fair, if you scan a massive lake, it creates an asset for lots and lots of files and folders and subfolders. So, yeah, cool, fine. Uh, but 2,300 customers is is a pretty good sign. That's a fairly decent uh, customer base for fairly niche data governance tool. So there's lots of good stuff in there. Um, one thing to note is that just because Purview is generally available does not mean every facet of Purview is generally available. So yes, the scanning and classification and all that kind of good stuff is generally available. I don't know why data classification and lineage is GA, but data lineage is not. I don't know, I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, and then going down into the catalog itself is GA. Data insights is not. So data insights is when you're in Purview and you have a look at the reports and saying this number of assets scanned, this number of types of file found, this number of attributes with a certain classification tag found. Kind of essentially the reporting and analytics done on top of your data map is still in Preview. So that's liable to change. They might change around the reports. They might change around how things work. They might change the user journey. Um, but at least kind of, you know, the actual data and the scanning uh, it is there inside it and then there's a scroll down in the video but you can see the integrations the scanners are at different stages so looking at Azure Synapse, Power BI, SQL Server, Azure SQL C uh, DB all of those scanners are GA but then some of the weirder and wonderful ones talking about GCP, S3, talking about using a Hive Metastore scanner 
the ones that are a little bit different uh still in preview we're going to see those hardening over time so again it is not absolutely everything in the world ga it's the core product and the core functionality is ga now bundled in there so with power bi going ga they've made the power bi lineage scanner better we can get better information now one or two sneaky things uh that kind of eagle-eyed viewers pointed out things like so uh walk extras i mentioned that you can now do um store prox lineage now whether that's in preview and it's just part of the demo or whether that's actually now out there i've not even looked yet but certainly interesting things more and more maturity even though the scanners that are ga are going to get better i'm going to see iterations over it so lots of interesting things going on and yeah just have a go it's pretty clear now when you go inside purview and you go i'd like to create one of those things it'll say preview if it's preview and it didn't before because everything was preview at least now you've got a clear delineation going this bit is ga these bits are preview so good lots of interesting stuff in there uh the final point as that short video uh, is around pricing so we did see the pricing change uh last video we did was around the elastic data map which has just meant that you've got this different way of thinking about price. It's not capped at that four or 16 capacity units. We've now got the idea that depending on how many, how much throughput and transactions you need, and depending on the overall size of your data map, you will be charged for the relevant data map scale. Again, it'll scale up, it'll scale down with your data. However, however, there is a little note if we go to the pricing page that it is free until November the 1st. Now, when we all saw that, we all thought, oh, well, November 1st must be GA date. It's in preview. It's free in preview, but it's we'll start charging the moment it goes GA. And actually, not true. So it's GA now, and they've left in the free preview pricing for the next month and a bit. So by November the 1st, 2021, it'll suddenly start charging. So there's some things that it'll tell you the price. You're not going to get charged that yet. Pay the price. It's not going to charge that yet. I think free for a limited time. So you'll see these various different bits and pieces in there and just all customers get free usage until October 31st. So if you're still thinking about it and you weren't using it because it was preview, but you're still not sure if you definitely want to use it, now is the perfect time because it's no longer a preview. It's now a GA tool. It now has all the rigor and robustness that a production tool should have, or at least claiming it does, um, but it's still free. So if you want to kick the tires, you want to see what it's like, you want to see if the integration does what you need it to do, now is a very good time, uh, at least throughout the month of October. Try it in its real production end state, but still not pay anything, which is obviously a great story. So yeah, I mean, and that, that is it really. All I want to do, on hot on the heels of that great story, that purview is now GA, we can go and have a play with it, and we're seeing more features going in there. Um, yeah go go and have a play go and explore go and go and try and get it to see if it can do your production workloads so that's the whole point right we had preview for people to try it out and people going well if it doesn't work it doesn't work we can just it's fine it's preview it's not going to do everything i needed to now it should be able to do everything you need it to so give it a go see if it does see if it does everything that you actually need out of an enterprise data governance tool me I have more plans. I am. Um, one of the things we're trying to do at the moment uh, is see if we can use things like the glossary or at least the glossary style functionality to encode our rules that we then pass back and use in engineering frameworks. That means we don't need to build our own metadata framework, which is nice. Um, so we're looking deeper into the API integration, deeper into what we can force Purview to do through that Atlas API. Uh, and as well as some of the other integrations that you get natively through Atlas, how that's going to be working with Purview. So plenty of more things coming from the advanced analytics side in terms of the things that we're looking into. And yeah, a whole roadmap of interesting stuff coming from Microsoft in terms of what they're going to do inside Purview as well. So loads of good stuff. As always, let me know down in the comments uh, what you think. Let me know if you're attacking it and you're getting stuck in and you're using Purview in anger currently or if you're planning to very soon. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time where we're going to get probably horribly embroiled in some dirty old code, which is great. We'll see you then. Cheers.